right. So again, a very simple under layer here, getting rid of the white. Nothing too extreme. Oh, and I need my source image, which is in my printer, my computer inside. Guys, bear with me for a moment, okay? I'm gonna step away and run to the restroom oh, real quick. You know what, why don't we take a break? How about that? Let's take, yes. okay. <laughs> All right, let me stop recording and see, okay. There All right. Oh, and the other thing is I just started uh, video, uh, the video again. Um, if you can unmute yourself, I mean, mute yourselves and then go back and unmute yourselves. Um, so again, like I was saying, I'm trying to find the boundaries of her face. Oh, Very quickly doing a um, sort of a sketch of the drawing. We're going to continue. I'm going to continue working. I mean, painting with or drawing with paint, if you will in just a moment, okay? So, mouth, it's kind of right at the edge. Shadow here, deep shadow. And again, we're gonna begin rather broad create these um, differences of um, shades and tones and tints. And at the end, we're going to refine the painting, okay? The portrait. Oh, I never got over those blue eyes. Oh. <laughs> we have a singer in, the, in our midst. face actually it's a little bit narrower all right can you see what I'm doing okay it looks so skewed okay all right I'm just comparing Her neck begins right here. There's an interesting boundary here because her hand also, there's a knuckle in there. Hairline, and then I'm just gonna add the boundary of the head, part of her head. Now, this number of colors are the only issue, the only thing that I don't like about the Soren's uh, palette is that there's not enough transparent colors. So, for example, if you do the hair with some of mixing some of these colors, it's gonna look rather flat. So, you might wanna be aware. Of that. Okay. All right. Make sure that you're um, content with your composition.
All right, there's a lot of skin in this particular painting. Which is kind of nice. I think her eyes are a little bit too high. So I can go back and review that. And then I'm gonna add here a horizon line of sorts. All right, I'm gonna bring the eyes down a little bit so I can just erase. I can use my paper towel here to refine, erase, refine. Notice that you will, and by the way, even if you work in an abstract way, I'd like for you to try starting with this technique in order to give it a try, okay? So just jump onto abstraction right away, okay guys? Okay, that's soft enough. All right, so I'm pretty content with what I'm seeing right now. So I'm gonna take a uh, Filbert brush and I'm going to mix, let me wash this because I started with black and we're gonna make some titanium white, some red, and some yellow. Well, ochre, I should say. Mix it in quantities so that you get sort of a mid-tone. We wanna create a mid-tone. We're actually gonna create three different levels, if you will, three, three different values. We want to start with a medium one. Now, notice how much paint I have. Oftentimes, we don't mix enough paint. So if you need to mix a little bit more, use a palette knife. That always help us creating, um, even though it's a little bit, a little bit more work than mixing your brush, but you can mix greater quantities faster. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna mix a little bit more. Red and then my ochre. So add just a hair of black. Okay, so I have my four colors in the bottom. I have my mid-tone here, all right? Any questions so far, guys? Just gonna add a little bit of Gamsol here. And I'm gonna start building up the skin. Basically, what I like about this tone is that you can add it all over the composition um, but right now I'm gonna to stick to the mid-tones on the uh, photograph that I have on my model and then the lighter tones, okay? And again, I'm kind of trying to break, break her face into areas, okay? Again, this is the frontal facet of the face and then of course the side over here. You can also correct because, I mean, it's, what's interesting is that it is until you put the painting on the canvas that you're gonna see the real color, right? I mean, right now I have it against a white um, surface.
that this is rather dark, but just wanted to add a little bit of tone in there. Think of this not so much as creating a perfect copy of our model here. Think about it more like you're trying to grasp, not like when you see someone from a distance, right? And you're like, hmm, is that Michelle? So try to grasp or to gather sort of the main characteristics. So squint a lot, especially when you're looking at the models, just squint in order so you can see some of the noise being reduced and then some areas in which you can focus a little bit better. We're gonna add some transitions in just a moment, okay? Definitely here. And I'm gonna work a little bit on her shoulder just to give you a little bit more, okay. All right, so this is good. Content here with my happy little brushes here. Now I'm gonna mix a lighter tone. So basically you're gonna use the same combination of red, ochre, white, but now I'm going to add a little bit of black, a little more than I added before. And that's going to create a deeper or a tone that's going to be perfect for my shadows. You could also create a lighter tone and, and start applying the highlights and then create finally. I think that's a better way, actually. I'm quite... Um, undisciplined, but I think there's no right or wrong way to go about this. So for you to notice, medium tone, and now I have my deep tone, okay? Same brush. And I'm gonna start adding some of these darks. And of course, again, you might have to adjust once you're working on the composition, okay? For example, I'm noticing that three levels or three gradations here are not gonna fly. I'm gonna to have to have at least four. So if you need to make it a little bit darker, just dip into the black. made a mistake that's okay the beauty of oil paint is that you can actually you know it stays open stays um, wet for a longer period of time so you can actually change things the beauty of acrylic is that even though it dries fast you can always paint on top because you're always going to have a surface ready Okay, so now I'm kind of working on creating some transitions here, blending a little bit so that my 
transitions are not too harsh. Okay, so it's time for me to take the excess out of my brush. And now I'm going to combine a much lighter or my highlights, okay? Again, I'm gonna use a tad of black. Red. Ooh, I'm gonna have enough painting here so I can paint a little bit afterwards after I'm done with you guys. Did that on purpose. I'm working on a painting that's making my hair turn green, actually. Okay, and now I'm gonna add sufficient black. I mean, not black, white, what am I talking about? Okay. You know what I need? I need two cameras. I feel like I need one camera here on top, aerial view, to look down what I'm doing. And then I need a, another camera here to show you guys then the application of paint. Okay, I feel like this tone is just, or this tint is not light enough. So I'm gonna add more white. I'm separating. Hang on, let me show you what I'm doing. So I want a lighter highlight. So see how I'm mixing a lot of pink? That's almost too much. So I'm just separating my paint here. If I add a little bit more yellow, that will be my mid-tone. And I have a lot to cover in this paint. So I'm adding more white. Gotta love my dogs. Okay, so now I'm content. Notice now my, I started with this color here for the background. Then I added a little bit of yellow here in order to create the preliminary drawing. And now I'm creating my three values here. And I know I'm gonna have to do a fourth one, okay? So now let's add these highlights. almost like too pink. I think I need to add a little bit of ochre. So again, you're gonna have to adjust, okay? Yes, that's better. Okay, there's a really strong highlight here on the nose. And there's another highlight here on the lid. So I'm kind of jumping from one area to another. That's okay, guys. Try to get a little bit lost in, in your painting. Um, so I think that's kind of one of the hardest things that to do when you're giving a demo. Do you guys have any questions? I have a question, Marion. Um, so you're only putting one figure on this painting, but you're wanting us to do a painting with three. Yes. 
So if I did three figures, we would be here until 10 o'clock. Right. And that's going to be kind of up to you in terms of the composition, okay? So, okay. And then there's another highlight here. So our painting has to be three figures? Yes. So you need to have three figures in your at least. And also the paint, the figures don't have to be this thin. I mean, realistic. You can actually do, you know, a figure that it's realistic and then an abstracted figure and so on, but they have to be three. Okay. All right. Can we do them on different canvases or does it have to be on the same one? I think that's a great idea. Because I feel like I would get confused trying to do them all in one piece. Well, I want them to be one canvas. So think about a composition. Um, so if you're going to do three canvases, it's going to be a triptych. So not three separate canvases per se. All right. So there has to be some continuation in the painting of sorts. All right, so there's another highlight over here that's a little bit softer. So again, I'm adding now highlights. So I added mid-tone, highlights, I mean, uh, dark tones, and then now I'm adding my highlights, okay? Just to recap. So one thing that I wanted to show you guys, and one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because it's very important. Notice that I have not touched the background. And what do I always tell you to do? Do the background first. Do the background first, yes. Exactly. But this is a little bit different. I want you guys to now work on the background in order to, to how do I say it? Think about it this way. You're not painting only, you're modeling. Think about you're being sculptors now. You're actually creating, modeling the face, the head. So we're carving out areas, we're applying lights to create a sense of volume. And it is not a flat painting. I do want you guys to have lots of volume, okay? So that's why I'm actually leaving the background when I'm completely satisfied with my face in here, with the body, with the figure. All right, ear can wait because I'm not too worried about the ear. Um, I am worried about the shoulder and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to add the shoulder because now we're gonna afterwards, when I'm done here, we get to carve out that background, okay? Uh, would it be possible for you to email us the video so that we can watch it again? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think I can. And you know what happened to me this morning is that one of my students was not able to log in. And I told her that I was going to uh, do the video and then I forgot. I gave a demo on a new assignment, but oh well. All right, so again, only this four colors, guys, okay? Don't cheat. For the background, too? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna clean out Okay, I think I'm wasting a little time in here, but this is important. It's important, guys. Okay. And by the way, I've never recorded before, so um, you guys are going to have to be a little patient with me, okay? All right, so I want to show you where, where I'm at. Okay, 
mouth is not ready, I can add that detail. Um, I mean, I can add it right now or I can add it later because it's so close to the boundary, I'm gonna add it right now. And I'm just gonna mix a little bit of red, white, use a finer brush. Dry. A little bit of ochre, so it's not completely pink. Okay, mixing here, mixing, mixing, mixing. I'm gonna add a little bit of white until I have like a deep mauve. You'll see, you guys are gonna love this palette. It's just so versatile. This side, it's much darker. So I'm just gonna make my other side a little bit darker here. And then bottom of the mouth is always a little bit lighter. Her top lip is usually darker than the bottom. You see that even in, uh, in animation, actually. So again, I have a lot of refinement to do to this painting in order to, to dry it. Now with oil paint, the trick is, there's gonna be a moment when you have to stop working because it's gonna be too wet. And if you continue working on it, it's gonna get muddy. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, that actually teaches how to stop, <laughs> but um, just be aware of that, okay? How's the quality? How do you see the image? Is it, is it showing well or? I think it's a pretty good for a video. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So then I think I might, you know, maybe with a better camera, with a different camera, you know, for the summer painting class. If you need like a feedback or something, I would suggest that something a little bit up there in the same um, level as your hand. So oh, from the that same angle, but a little up. Maybe I could sit down even. It, it's not it's not you i guess it's the the surface you well like I mean? this the camera you yeah mean? just a little lift it up yeah have a box huh? or like a gopro on your head that would be that fun, would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied. Um, I mean, I could add some details in the eyes. Let me show you guys what it looks like, okay? So again, I'm just breaking up. But notice how much volume, even if this is the underpainting, there's more to be done, other layers, but Right now, I'm very satisfied with the volume of the face, okay? So now, I'm going to mix a background. And one thing that I'd like to do is, hang on one second, let me clear, clean out my surface here. 
you know what, let's use some of this time um, today, well, in the next few classes, classes that we have left, to kind of refine this technique of doing demos and then that way, because I mean, I don't even know if we're going to be back in the fall, to be honest with you guys. What do you think? I feel like it's going to take, it's going to be the same with the fall too. Mm -hmm. I feel, I'm not sh like, I'm not it's sure. All, if, yeah. I saw a thing that the, um, a mayor in Louisiana has called off all public gatherings until 2021. So I'm wondering yeah. if like the rest of the states are going to follow like that. So let me show you what I'm doing here. So my palette is pretty full. So I'm actually moving a uh, paint here to the top just to clear out some areas, okay? Who's moving painting out of the way? Wow. Professor, a question for the palette. What do you think is the best, like the best palette surface that to be used with the oil? Glass? Okay. And I mean, notice I have some dry paint over here and oh, by the way, I remember, uh, did you, um, Cassandra, did you figure out how to change the blade on these? No, I made my boyfriend do it. <laughs> ah, perfect. I mean, this is all paint. Look how easy. I mean, right now I'm just with you guys. I'm using a paper palette that I have here. I mean, that works. Too. So for the background, uh, let's see. You know, guys, I love red. And let's see, red and black. It's a little puppy out there. It's very saturated. It's like this deep, almost burgundy color I have here. Let me show you, see if you guys can see the difference here. See how pink that is? Can you see that? Make sure you're mixing very well, okay? So for example, for Kenneth, who, you know, you're based on the presentation you did today, I would suggest try working with your palette knife based on some of the works you liked, because then, and that way you can make, you know, similar paintings, but you can have sort of the way of making it with your own hands, you know, instead of doing it through a computer. Um, and that way you can really see what the surface, how the surface behaves, if you will. All right, so now I am adding this color here in the background. How about had a little bit of black in my, um, in my brush. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing the top part Covering my canvas very well. Now I'm going to refine, use a better brush. This is a rather thick brush. It's not going to give me all the details, but it's great for applying large areas of paint. So now I'm going to switch and then turn into something a little bit softer in order to, again, carve out the face. So we have, here, let me see if I can. Jana, for you, I mean, try using a flat brush that it's also stiff in order to create the same um, approach that Wayne Thiebaud had on his paintings. Okay, it's very difficult for me to work in this way for the demo, hang on. I'm gonna add here a little bit of, of 
highlight. That I remember was there. Oftentimes when I have to do boundaries on the left hand side of the canvas, for me at least, just a little trick here guys. It's easy to turn around the painting. So I'm much better on this side. Oh, you should see how sharp and nice that looks. Not too concerned with the hair part because we're gonna be applying hair next. Can you see how sharp and nice that is? All right. And then I'm gonna do, The GoPro, okay, I'll, I'll look into a GoPro. Ideally, I would have already painted here. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white in order to change my tone here. And carve out that face, guys. The nice thing is that I have my brushes here and I'm very particular about my brushes. Now, hang on one second, I gotta review this real quick. a very soft, tiny little highlight right on the edge of her cheek. So I just applied it. I'm going to clean my brush and then add a darker shadow on this side. Made her a little bit flat on here. Let me add some of that mid tone under the eye. Under the eye. And then a little bit here and so on and so forth. Bring the computer here. Okay, makes sense? Okay. So working 
Um, you can work a little bit faster, of course, I'm talking and I'm explaining well, you know, but you guys can actually try to get in the zone, play some music. And, you know, I'm going to continue working on this today, but uh, right now, but how about if you guys take out your sketchbooks and then start sort of jotting down, uh, except Jana, she's not going to work from a sketchbook. I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. Uh, meanwhile, the first thing I want to do is let's, uh, let me share with you guys the, what shall I call it? The, um, hey, como se llama? Chica. Google Drive. So who's interested in using Michelle's? Or is anybody interested in using her photos? Um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna mix and match. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I don't mind. Um, let's see, how can I share these? And I would like to have a copy too. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I may use one of hers and... You know what, I'm gonna send it via email. How about that? Yes. The link. So would black and white references not be the best in this situation? Um, well, I'd like for you to work in color. So I think it will be best if you work from uh, color. Okay. Yeah. All right. So can you please tell me that you were able to open the link I sent? And maybe you can also open it on your uh, computers. Did you send it, I, I, did you send it via the e-connect or whatever it is? No, via text. Um, I can only oh, see one text. picture. Okay. Hmm. Why is that? I think uh, you linked the picture and not the whole file. Yeah. So you basically go down to the, the name of the folder and you go to get shareable link, I think. That's what I thought I did. Let me double check, okay? My drive, okay, here, share. Get shareable link. There we go. Okay. And I can also send it. Okay, so can you try this one now? Hmm. I got. Uh, let's it's see, I got just one. one picture for me. It's mm -hmm. another one. Like it's one picture, but another picture. Oh, really? that's what I got as well. Okay, let me see. I'm actually going out. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Share it with me. Okay. All right, let me try one more time, okay? Okay, I think that's it. I think that is it. I was able to open all of them. Yeah, I got all of them. Yeah, that looks right. Yes. Yes, I got all of them. Well, I got two of them. Only two? Did everybody get only two? No, I can see the whole file. I got all of them. Um, all of them. Jenna, do you mind? Well, let me send it also via email, okay? That's, yes. that's what I'll do. Yeah, okay. The thing is, I need to send it separate to Carolyn and Jenna, and then I'll send it via, okay. Let me do a couple of things real quick. Okay. And you guys have to promise me that you're gonna try to get on Blackboard at some point. I, I just, I just got them all. I just, it just, okay. awesome. I'm, had to load. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to send them uh, via email as well. Okay. So you have them spring 2020. 
The challenge with that too is if you've messed it up as bad as I have, you have to download, you have to go and you have to download a letter and then you have to take the letter to the registrar's office. So yeah. it's just a big mess. <laughs> yes, but maybe what you can do is send an email. I wonder. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep investigating. I got okay. them all right now. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I just placed an announcement. Did you guys get the email to the announcements or no? Because I don't think I marked. Hang on, send a copy. All right. Did you send an email to me? I, I just got something, it looks like. Yes. Oh, did you? Did you get my email, my announcement? Uh, let me see. I got. I think I just got it. I yep. got the email. Yeah. Great. All right. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh huh. You did? Oh, then you're receiving my emails, Jana. Oh, okay. And were the, were the emails from Blackboard or what, whatever? <laughs> okay. And then I um, share it with everyone. Woohoo! Okay. All right, guys, this is exciting. Okay. I feel like we're, we're getting places. I don't know if... Uh, Oh, and I need to stop the recording.